You're listening to Wave of Absurdity with your hosts, Owen and Phil. Hey everybody and welcome to Season 3 of Wave of Absurdity. We have made it this far and quite honestly I didn't think Phil and I's friendship would actually last this far. So welcome to Season 3. It's tenuous. It is <laughs> tenuous at best. Go no, go ahead. We're friends now. Season three. All right. Well, look, we're gonna start off the way that our ancient, ancient relatives used to start off their podcast with something very spiritual. Owen, I believe you have it ready. Yes, I have a fortune cookie now. This is a remnant of the old ages of podcasting and indeed past seasons of wave of absurdity and we will get into changes in a minute but for now the fortune cookie is as far I'm so nervous I'm so nervous don't worry I've got a pen drum to soothe you the fortune cookie says someone oh someone thinks the world of you wow wait of the podcast or of one of us? Why not both? Well, because I feel like already, episode one, the fortune cookie is uh, trying Jesus to drive Christ. a wedge between us. <laughs> it, it is. Ah, all right. All right. No, that's a good vibe. That's a good vibe. I think. Well, it was. It's <laughs> like going on vacation and having your parents start yelling. Is this, you ruined the buzz, man. <laughs> Sorry. No, all right. Let's 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 ride this feeling still. I still feel a little little high from anticipation. Why uh, why don't we talk about what's different? Season three. What can people expect? Okay, well, I think probably the biggest thing that either people are going to be most happy for or are actually going to... Why would they be disappointed in this news? I'll tell you the news. Uh, we're not actually just doing six episodes. No. That that farce has changed. We are we are moving on. We are no longer just doing six episodes. I believe, Phil, we are actually doing is it twelve? At least a dozen. At least twelve with a I do with a mid season break as as the professionals call it, but considering yes. we aren't professionals, I don't feel, you know, comfortable using such such words. But. Well, all right, how about we call it a mid season slob off? I love it. Uh, also, what else have we changed? I don't... Well, we have changed the way... We used to have a lot of games and lots of chances to win prizes. Ah, right? yes. That has not... Yeah, that has not changed. However, the prizes you win and the way you win them has changed. Dramatically, actually. So there's been big changes. <laughs> Whereas in the past, we would have a game and a prize. Excuse me, this season... What we're going to do is every game that we have, everything where a user submits, a listener, submits something, you win a ticket, a virtual ticket, into a raffle. And every time that happens, you get a little virtual raffle ticket. And at the mid-season break, you will get a chance to win a whole bunch of prizes. Those prizes will be added periodically throughout the first six episodes. Uh, so it'll be like a giant bag of probably mostly steam gifts but you can you can probably count on some weird fluff that we'll send you if you're comfortable giving out your address so there'll probably be a little weird stuff mixed in there if you want it right off the bat i think we're gonna throw stuff into the pot without even having a contest or anything we're just gonna put some stuff in right now yeah right now i actually i'm gonna throw into the to the mix I'm going to throw in a uh, Mirror's Edge Steam Key and a Burnout Paradise Steam Key as well. All right. Well, that's weird because I'm throwing in a Humble Bundle. Ha, I said it right. Which kind of seems redundant now, but it has Dead Space, Burnout Paradise, The Ultimate Box, Crisis 2, Maximum Edition, Mirror's Edge, Dead Space 3, and Medal of Honor. So right there, tons of prizes that you could win and duplicates oh. apparently yes well you know you can trade them you can you can do a lot with that you can resell them you can do stuff with that 
I think the majority of, of listeners are probably gamers, if I'm not mistaken, according to our stats. <laughs> we don't our, have stats. <laughs> our, our survey led us to believe that. All right, so yeah, we'll get into that a little more as the entries. Oh, that should lead us into sponsoring a segment, something that will help increase not just the prizes, but exposure for listeners and little projects that they're doing. Uh, if you want to sponsor a segment, if you want to sponsor a, a master debater or a would you rather, drop us an email. Let us know. You have maybe a YouTube channel or a blog or a comic or something that you're doing and you want some exposure. We, uh, we have hundreds of listeners, we swear, and we'll get you some exposure. So drop us a line. We already have a sponsor for master debater today. We'll get to that. Just want to let you know anything. Uh, we can announce it for you. Let us know. Also, I, I should say that we are actually focusing on you, the people, even more so this season. We want this season to be all about you. This is why we're doing the whole raffle system. So every time you send something in and we mention it or whatever, you get put into the raffle for those Steam games. This is all about you people. So we are encouraging uh viewer participate <laughs> participation that's all these participation P's because I, exactly i know you wanted to say podcast for the people that's a phrase owen has been bandying about during our preparation podcast for the people by the people and i am very much for you people out there one final thing you should be aware of owen and i well we're adults we can admit when we uh when we flubbed it, when we had a mistake, we know that there are times that we will not, possibly, hopefully not, but there might be times we, not, we might not be able to record. So we already took care of that in advance. We promise, we make this heartfelt promise that you will, oh get, <laughs> you will get a scheduled podcast release, okay? A scheduled podcast cast release. This is our promise to you. Now... In order to maintain the integrity of this podcast, they can't be two and a half, three hours long. So we're going to try to keep it to roughly about an hour. There'll be some standard segments, things you remember, but we'll probably rotate a few things. So don't get too surprised if some of your favorite segments aren't in here right away. Owen. Yes. I couldn't help but notice that we haven't had any remarkable news going on in about nine minutes. That's unusual. Well, don't you worry your pretty little face, Phil, because I have some news that will shock you to your very core. This makes me nervous. Uh, well, we all know that you're an advocate for squirrels. <laughs> Not necessarily an advocate, but... Well, an advocate of eradicating squirrels and... Yes, the vermin of the trees. The vermin of the trees, he says. And do you or do you not live in Philadelphia? Uh, home of the mutant squirrels. Well, exactly. So you do live in Philadelphia. Well, you may be shocked to know that before Philadelphia, there were no urban squirrels around. So thanks to Philadelphia, the plague of urban squirrels, the things that you hate so much, your state started. Sorry. It sickens uh, me. Urban squirrels? That makes it sound like, what are they, on the corner playing dice? What, what do you mean yeah, urban squirrels? Yeah, they were squirrels? like three-quarter lengths. They got sagging hats and they just stand <laughs> around, you know, shop corners, badgering old people. Oh, man. So wait, why... You know, squirrels Wait, that you see in, in the city. It's all right, because so of Philadelphia's fault that the entire U.S. has squirrels now. Where, where is this? What, what are you, where are you getting this information from? It sounds suspect. Just because I got it on the internet does not make it false. I'm not saying that. I'm simply asking you, did you make this up? No. As far as historian Benson can determine, the nation's great squirrel experiment began in 1847 in Philadelphia, when three of the plucky rodents, a wildlife novelty at the time, were released into Franklin Square. 
And it basically he goes on to say how officials actually cared for them, especially grew like nuts and whatnot for these squirrels. And pretty much like rats and mice, they just exploded and propagated all over not only the state, but the United States too. Have you ever seen a squirrel explode? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to show you one? some footage. <laughs> no, I don't have a squirrel on hand to explode for you for audio pleasure. I do not. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'll have to look that up later. Funny you should mention something about the old hometown because that indicates that through our little friendship here that's evolved over the podcast that you may, may have been paying attention to, you know, what makes us friends. You know, we should... We should know some things about each other, shouldn't we? Ah, well, yeah, okay. So what you're saying is that if we were actually friends... IRL. Like these, this podcast suggests is an evolution of friendship, then I should be able to answer basic questions about you? I am indeed about to launch into three questions that I hope you are yeah. able to answer. Because it's going... <laughs> It's really going to set the tone. It's going to set the tone for this whole season, okay? Oh, God. All right, now these these are questions, and it'll help maybe for new listeners to maybe know a little bit about us or figure out if they want to stop the podcast right now and pay attention to driving. All right. I'm going to ask you the first question here. Can you simply name one inside joke that we will not explain to anyone here? A little inside joke. Between you and me. Farfig Nugan. That's not really a joke, is it? It's more of a... Farfig Nugan is what we say when there's a major editing snafu. To let us know. And that's not really an inside joke. No, no, pen drums! That just happened! No! <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just going to make a little noise, and that will be our inside joke. It'll be a reminder. Eh. That's our inside <laughs> joke. See? Later. All right. So one wrong. Owen doesn't know. If you'd I like know, to know now. The inside. Yeah. All right. Question number two. What was my first computer? Have you ever told me this before? Uh, one, yes. Two, <laughs> if you had been paying attention, it should be easy enough to extrapolate. A ZX Spectrum. <laughs> No. I don't feel like that's your legitimate guess. No, no, that's that's I'm sticking with that. Commodore 64. Oh, get off of it. What is my favorite season? I feel like I mention this a lot to you. <laughs> oh god. It's only 4. <laughs> Which makes it even worse when I fuck it up. You have a 25% chance of just randomly getting this right, I think. Spring. Very good. Very good. I am a man full of vigor for spring. All right. That's sort of sort of a saving grace for you there. Well, let's move on to the next segment, shall we? <laughs> no. What? No, no, my friend. Because even though I have demonstrated that I am a piss bull <laughs> friend, I too will demonstrate that you are a piss poor friend with my own questions. Ah, oh, Christ. <laughs> now, I have talked about these to you before, so it should be very easy. Something that every friend should know if they're really a friend. So we start off with the simple one. When is my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> Go your on. Your birthday. Your birthday is in. No, looking up Facebook or anything. October, October, right? It's before Halloween. That much I remember. So October what? Are you eight? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong, asshole. <laughs> When's your birthday? August eighth. Oh, see? I got some things right there. Yeah, I'll give myself no. half a point for that. I'll give you half a point for getting eight. Well done. Thank you. Already I feel like the better friend in this relationship. <laughs> I knew spring. Okay. <laughs> what is my middle name? 
<laughs> what? I don't think I've ever heard that. I've I've told you this before. I I don't know. I don't have a clue. Poindexter. No, Owen Poindexter. No. <laughs> See now you've upset me. What's your What's your middle name? I don't think I've ever heard it. I don't think I've ever heard it. I remember distinctly distinctly telling you. All right. Well, I'm saying to you, as a poor friend, I don't remember. Well, you suck. My name is William. We were talking about how, you know, your name is so easy to uh, be construed into many things. Uh, and mine <laughs> was William when people knew that. You know, kids started to call me Owen Willie. And very disturbing. And, and Owen Willie? To the childhood, didn't he? Well, your childhood cohorts weren't very... Uh... Well, my last name's Chamberlain as well, so I'd be Owen Willie Chamberpot. Okay? Oh, all right. Yeah, well, yeah, that's not too bad. All right, I will remember that. So well, you will time. now. So, <laughs> yeah. really, you've got none of these right. 0. 0.5. 1.5. Uh, this one should be easy. Um, what is my favorite game? I've talked about this many times when wow. announcing things on my YouTube or on my fan page, even to you. Your favorite game <laughs> is, in fact, M Mirror's Edge. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I don't know your favorite game. Ooh, that's a shame, Phil. You should have stuck <laughs> with your guess at the beginning and made it off like you did know me because Mirror's Edge is, in fact, my favorite game. Well, no, I went with my gut reaction. I get another point five there I, I, no, for a total you of then one. You that. We are now tied no, at well, our no, friendship I'm, battle. No, no, that is the perfect note to continue. You do not with this know episode. me. I know you. I'm the like, better friend because I got one point. You got half a fucking point. I got two halves. You did not. Let us know you if retracted. you think I should get half a point. Contact. You retract that wave of absurdity. At Hotmail. Oh, no, no, no. Waveofabsurdity.com. <laughs> Give us the email, Owen. I'm still messed up. I'm enraged that I'm not getting the half point. Uh, the email is contact at waveofabsurdity.com. Contact at waveofabsurdity.com. And Phil, I'm the better friend. <sighs> speaking of better friends, podcast for the people. I'm not speaking about better friends at all because that doesn't make sense. Podcast for the people is our motto here so our next segment is pre-recorded because well it's just better that way saves us all some time what you're about to hear is the would you rather segment if you're not familiar with would you rather's it means you don't get out much would you rather's are little questions that are designed i mean i i took them from a website but they're designed to uh just get the conversational fluids going so we've decided this season we are going to do them with a third party. Just some, pick some people at random, record them, throw them on the podcast. Who do we have for these Would You Rathers? Uh, well, firstly, should I just say, if you too want to be featured in the segment, email us. But uh, for this week's Peasant on Parade, we have uh, my good friend Christopher, who will be explaining his absurd notions in the Would You Rather. I have for you, Chris... Two would-you-rather questions that I hope will define us all as human oh beings dear. that will, you know, this, this, will, this will make you think, all right? So I'm curious to know your answer. I mean, Are I you ready? Captain. I am always ready, Captain. Would you rather have a bell go off every single time you were aroused? Every time you were aroused. Or... <laughs> Would you rather feel a sharp pain in your side every single time someone said your name? You know what? I'd go for the bell. Uh, that just sounds actually fun. That sounds... You could be standing in an elevator. Just all of a sudden. A little... Right. Nobody will know what's up but you. 
I think also if you actually tell the people that you like, it could also be like a calling sign. Yes. Does it ring faster when it climaxes? No, it's not, it's not like a cell phone ringtone that you can download new. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know. It's, it's Big Ben for me. And a little, <laughs> a little teeny little girl teeny little, 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 for you. No, uh, it's, it's, you don't think that would be problematic? You're at family dinner. You happen to have one of those rogue thoughts. Um, about your cousin yeah, yeah i was gonna say that's exactly what i was gonna say <laughs> you perfect so yeah and and you know or your mom's talking about something you're not even paying attention you're having fantasy thoughts and your mom's like oh yeah so that nun died the other day ding -ling -ling -ling. chris is that your pervert alarm going off <laughs> all right all right if you could have a ringtone instead of a bell what uh what tune what sound would you want to go off every time you got a little chubby. Flight of the Valkyries. <laughs> More like Flight of the Bumblebee. Like the gangster. <laughs> um, although I can't think of the song name right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. Are you aroused right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think so. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, Christ. All right. All right. Let me ask you this. No. Mm. Would you rather have sex with a goat and nobody, nobody knows that you did it? You're forced to have sex with a goat, but nobody will find out you did it, but you had sex with a goat. Or not have sex with a goat, but everyone thinks that you may have had sex with a goat. I'm not sure, but you might be known as the guy that fucks goats. You know what? I'd probably just put a little put a little Johnny on it and just go at it. <laughs> Let the bells ring. Yep. <laughs> just well, get it over with. Get it over with and nobody would know. I mean, it's only going to be like, <laughs> like two minutes tops anyways. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I guess the would you rather doesn't specify what it considers full on. <laughs> no, you have to wait for the goat to come. Sorry. <laughs> Oh man. The goat has to come. Oh man. Goat come. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, would you be a goat fucker too? You know what? If Chris can enjoy it, so can I. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I just need to get two goats. All right. Um <laughs> Can we like high five as we're doing it? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Can you both do the same goat? I know that's the next question you're going to ask. Oh. All right. Well, I suppose if it's a female, it should be. All right, it's it be fine. <laughs> it's the interesting goat. that public opinion seems to be more important than sticking your dick in a farm <laughs> animal. <laughs> so I mean, what? I We've we're, we're all lads here. We've stuck our penises in questionable things. <laughs> like that blender. What's <laughs> just one more? It's 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 not a big deal. As yeah, long question. as it doesn't have teeth, then there you go. Well, all right, let's... Obviously, Phil values his penis more than me. <laughs> <laughs> let's digress on that for now. All right, I know I said two, but I'm going to ask you a third. Would you oh. rather, since we're having so much fun here, not fucking goats, yet we're having fun, would you rather fart popcorn or have everyone be able to view your past and future web browsing history. It's available for them to browse. Mm. No. You know what? I'd probably, I should probably go with the fart popcorn <laughs> one. Mind you, this is fart-flavored popcorn. Uh, I was gonna, that's, that's my next question. Is it, <laughs> does it taste like the movie theater popcorn, or is it going to be some butt popcorn? Is it salted? <laughs> is it going to sting on the way out? I fart popcorn and sneeze butter. Perfect. No. Oh. It's, it's ass-flavored popcorn. That, oh, man. Yeah. Plus... Why don't you, you got to make it gross? That's a waste of popcorn. Well, it's, I, if you could find somebody that wanted to eat it out of your ass anyway... Uh, then what problem would it be for them to see your browsing history? It could end world hunger that way. You just eat a bunch of beans next day. That sounds forever going to be in my head whenever popcorn's <laughs> popping. Thanks. Exactly. 
I think you made Owen aroused. All right, where's the goat at? <laughs> sheep. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the bell is not close enough. Owen, fart popcorn, or have everyone um be able to view your browsing history, past and future. That's kind of odd, but you know what I. I rarely have any shame in myself anyway. So if anybody wants to see my browsing history, then uh, let them go at it. I think it's probably the worst of two evils because <laughs> you know, some some toots can be quite prolonged and you just don't want a, a brief full of just popcorn, ass mm. popcorn at that as well. So I yeah, people can have at my, uh, my browsing history. I've got nothing to hide. Well... Oh. That's not the case. It's not that you don't have anything to hide. It's you have nothing you're ashamed of. Well, yeah, exactly. I'm not ashamed. I'm all for it. Chris, I feel like he's kind of implying that you have a lot to hide. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he does. You know, I mean, it's not like you can see my browsing history right now anyways. It's all right. Uh, I would uh, not. No, we, we can. I'm sorry. Nobody, nobody told you shh, that if you were part of this segment, shh. we could see your browsing list. Uh, what? Goatsonboats.com. Uh, I don't know what to tell hey, you. Hey, hey, shh. We appreciate your valuable input on these "would you rather"s to help to help all of us really define ourselves as human beings. So well, it's my pleasure. Yeah, we're my glad. Pleasure. Glad to be here. Uh, is there anything you would like to say or add or? promote or anything like that I just hope everybody has a wonderful day wow class act class act right there i can't believe both you guys would fuck goats i mean that's some quality entertainment there you know i think one of these days i should turn it around and ask you these questions because i think deep down you secretly get aroused by goats <laughs> I may or may not be aroused by those things. Something I am aroused about is Chris. He's now in the raffle. Oh, yes. Simply for being a part of the show. So, uh, officially, our first Would You Rather, and officially our first entry into the raffle. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate it. It's that easy to get into the raffle. Makes me feel pretty good. Oh, speaking of feeling... (laughs) <laughs> it's time for Feeling Phil Alright, what uh I think it would be easier just to do it than to explain to new people what's going on here. So why don't we just do this? All righty right. then, Phil. How's your bum tubes feeling? My what? Your my bum, bum tubes. T- my bum tubes? I have more than one. I have one bum tube. Well, you know, the, the colon, the bum tubes. Oh. Uh, well, it's doing pretty good. Not irritated. As far as I know, it's not red. And, uh, <laughs> Why would you know that? Well, I assume it's not red because nothing, there's no sensation. Everything seems what, normal. What does redness sensate like? Hmm? Well, the itchy ass, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm talking about your colon, not your butthole. Oh, well, I don't, how do I figure out specifically how to feel my colon? Hmm, let me just concentrate. Yeah, it feels all right. It feels empty. How about that? <laughs> That's the sign of a healthy man if ever I saw one. <laughs> oh boy. So that was feeling Phil. Coming up next, our first ever sponsored feature. Oh, I'm very excited about this. It is sponsored by Phil. No, not sad lame Phil, but Phil from Germany who has actually decided to donate payday, the original payday, into the the raffle at the end. So thank you very much, Phil. 
Yes, uh, if I may, Phil is one half. He's the artist behind Unlimited Ammo Comic, which has uh, actually been going on for about four years now, a webcomic. Uh, Unlimited Ammo Comic dot blogspot dot com uh, I suggest you start from the beginning not only can you watch the art skills progress uh, there are a lot of standalone comics but there's a, an interesting storyline between roommates death and they're definitely gamers so check them out thank you Phil for sponsoring Master Debater starting now <laughs> Okay, so we have two possible debates that we will get to in a minute, but um, we have come prepared this season, and we actually have some master debater topics that we would like you to choose on on what we um, debate on. So I, I know some of the ones we have, um, we probably will get to most of these, but obviously the one with the most votes uh, triumphs and you can vote by either commenting on YouTube or if you're listening to this on iTunes send in a email at wave of absurdity no <laughs> contact at wave of absurdity dot com That's so right. we we have uh, shower versus bath could be an absurd one uh, flavored condoms or non flavored condoms mm. and I'm sure Phil would have a right with that one uh, left versus right um, That's going to be a big one. Which which direction is better? Um, this one is what I'm personally pushing. Uh, HD DVD versus VHS. Lame. It's not lame. Uh, if the people... To, <laughs> oh, vote for that one, people. Um, fly or sale and uh, soup or salad. So if any of those appeal to you, then uh, please do cast a vote. And you can also cast a vote on uh, Facebook, my Facebook page, PC Gamer 99 um, so there's three ways to vote, so you have no reason not to. But uh, I'm going to be the courteous man today, and I'm going to give Phil the choice of what we choose between. So we have two that uh, we couldn't decide on before the start, and that is bed bunks, top or bottom, or bubble wrap or newspaper when you're sending stuff. So you know, wrap it in bubble wrap or newspaper. So Phil, I'm going to leave that up to you to decide which debate do you want to lose in. Oh, nice wording. Uh, before I get to that real fast, just a reminder that if you do email in a suggestion, if you have an absurd debate topic, also, and we use it, that's an entry into the raffle. So, I am going to go with bunk beds today. I do like the bubble wrapper newspaper one, but I'm going to go with the bunk bed debate. Which is better, top or bottom? Now, if you want to explain the system okay yes well the system has slightly changed um for the better we've actually the old format was we would have two minutes start two minutes rebuttal and then a closing one minute um close <laughs> a closing one minute closer <laughs> exactly we've actually trimmed a minute off or a minute and a half so we're actually doing 90 second opener 90 second uh, rebuttal and then uh, still a minute closer so it's very simple and you vote on who wins the debate we have to say it's not who you like the most it's who has issued the better debate uh, in this most grand schemes that's right disregard your feelings for me because i want you to you know be very yeah. Judgmental keep, about what Owen's about to say in his master debater because he always flubs it. Keep Sorry. your keep your hate away from Phil. Uh, so how we decide who's going first? We have we go to random.org, which is the random number generator. I am even. Phil is odd, so I generate and whatever number comes up decides who is for what. Okay, the number's ninety-one. So Phil. Okay. Um, traditionally. It's important to not go first so that you might acquire ammo to use against your opponent. However, I think to start the season off right, I will go... Oh, wait. What am I doing? Am I choosing which one I want? <laughs> yes. Do you want to think top or bottom? <laughs> You've been waiting two seasons to ask me that. I can't wait to hear the answer. I... 
<laughs> Damn, I didn't realize I'd be thrust into this checkmate so soon. I would like to be on the bottom. Ow. Okay. All right. That's exactly the response I expected from you. I just fisted myself. All right, we generate again to decide who goes, picks the order. Uh, 45, it's all coming up, Phil. That's right. Well, as I was saying earlier <laughs> when I was making a mistake, that traditionally going first is considered bad as far as the debate goes. You want to go second, but not this guy. Ooh. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go first and take my 90 seconds right now. Good day to you, Owen. Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen of the podcast. Bunk beds. They are not just a way to save space. They can be very fun. They can also be very dangerous. If you have an opportunity, if you're in a, in a college dorm, or if you're going to a sleepover, does that stuff still happen? And there's a bunk bed opportunity. Which do you choose, top or bottom? Simple. Bottom. One main reason safety there's a fire boom you're rolling out there's any sort of emergency boom you're rolling out plus let's remember that most people are used to sleeping on that particular elevation you know you're not jacked up six feet in the air you're used to that your entire life you go somewhere else you start sleeping on the top bunk you forget you wake up ah! concussion next thing you know you're in a coma all because you wanted to be closer to the roof? I don't understand the allure of the top bunk. That just seems silly. You need to get a snack. You don't want to step on somebody. You need to take a whiz. You don't want to mess things up for the other person, do you? I mean, unless you're evil, like, oh, and sure, you can be like that if you want. Main thing I'm going to push in this first 90 seconds is the sheer ease of getting out of the bed and the safety of being on the bottom bunk. It's that simple. Time. Okay, a very weak opener, if I do say so myself, and I will take my 90 seconds now. Hello, esteemed colleagues and friends, and thank you for hosting tonight's debate. I've been writing some notes as Phil has been uh, spitting bullshit out like a dung beetle. And, well, he says yeah. it's more safe. It's more safe. Everybody loves safe. He is the PC master, isn't he? He's the political correctness master. He wants things to be done by the book. He wants all the fun things that we know and love as humans to be plain and boring. Whoever has fun by doing things safely? Absolutely no one. There are many pros to having the top bunk. One of them is, hey... If there's a murderer in the house and they creak open the door, who are they going to stab first? Little old you, six feet in the air, or somebody else that's closer to the ground? Who are they going to stab? Hmm, I know where I would rather be as I hear my <laughs> friend's blood-curling screams as he's getting stabbed in the head. Much safer. Also, there's the privacy. There's a lot more privacy as you are hoisted up in the air. And the fun part is you can also invade people's privacy as well just by popping your head over the edge of the, the railing there. And yes, it is safe. You're not going to fall off because bug beds have railings. What kind of caveman? <laughs> caveman. All right. I will now take my second 90 seconds. Uh, yes, of course my opponent is immediately going to go to the murderer route, because that is obviously his train of thought. Uh, I'd like to think that if you're on the top bunk and a murderer comes in, you're going to be pretty much right at eye level. I mean, I'm making a stabbing motion, I'm holding a, a gun up here, I'm, you know, that's, that's eye level, that's at least four feet or higher. Uh, it seems to me that the bottom bunk would be much, Four much feet. safer. Hey, I didn't talk during your debate! And, uh, of course, of course, <laughs> yeah, you need privacy on that top bunk. You're, you're with another person. You really need that privacy. Just because my opponent masturbates close to the roof doesn't mean that's what everybody else 
needs. And of course, he's just going to invade your privacy. So yeah, I guess for scum holes, I, you know, the top might be slightly better. But uh, I, I just, I, I just don't see it. And being well. square, safety. Uh, oh yeah, I'm a big bad man for safety. Well, I'd like to point out that safety can be achieved without being plain and boring. And that's coming from somebody that doesn't need rails in his bed to sleep like my opponent. Oh, vote for Phil. Phil's the best. Notice how we can't even continue his debate to the end of time. Uh, I will take mine. I just like a... No! Well, to the end of time. again, he hasn't really combated what I have said. The top bunk is... It's more fun. It's for the energetic folk. It's it's just it's just for anyone who likes doing more things than nothing. You can do many things. Like I said, not getting stabbed. Four feet high, Phil. Four feet high in your eye level, really? What are you, a hobbit? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> if they're going to stab you, then they're going to get your little tootsies at most. It's much easier and quicker to stab the person on the bottom before ever coming to you. And... When your friend is screaming for help, you have the height advantage. So you can stand up on your bunk bed or crouch, depending on how high the ceiling is. And you can actually do a flying outboard drop onto the killer's head, <laughs> thus knocking out the killer and becoming a hero. Why are you a hero? Because you, yes, you chose the top bunk and your courageous act of flinging yourself of such a fantastic height has actually resulted in this killer being knocked out. And now look at you. Look at you. Look at yourself for a second. You are great. <laughs> and do you want to know why you're great? Because you made the right choice of going on the top bunk. Uh, that's really all i got to say. Phil hasn't combated anything that I said. It's more fun. There's, there's more pros. You can fall out of the bottom bunk just as easy. I like how the bulk of both our arguments now seems to revolve around some mysterious bunk bed murder. Uh, all right, let me uh, let me change this timer. I'll take my closing sixty seconds now. Um, before I address something really fast, I just like to say the only flinging of self that Owen is going to do in the top bunk is with his penis. Thank you. Now. Owen would have you believe that the bottom bunk is more dangerous. However, I haven't heard anything. In fact, everything he suggested is more dangerous. Flinging, jumping, head first, all this stuff. Uh, ad hominem attacks against me, slander. All these things aren't doing anything to support his position. Closer to the ground is where humans are meant to be. Okay? Even if you're living way up in a mountain, you're still only a few feet from the ground. Why? Why elevate yourself to a position of danger? All right? Even my opponent agrees that it's much higher than four feet. Very much so that you could hurt yourself. Not just yourself, but somebody else. The sheer mass landing on another person. Would you want to be responsible for that? Just so that you could possibly be a hero when the crazy bunk bed murderer comes around do you really want to risk it or would you rather have a bit of a buffer yeah have that person up at eye level that's my advice i didn't actually start my timer so now i can't tell how long i have to sling <laughs> neither this neither did i <laughs> in closing the only reason you should take the top bunk is if you know the person that is you're going to be sleeping with, for lack of a better term, has some tremendous gas or urinary problems. Otherwise, bottom safer. That's 60 seconds. Okay, well, I'll take my 60 seconds now. Once again, I go back to my opponent who has twice now has had time to refute my things, but yet he does not. I will once again repeat myself as he has done. The fun of invading people's privacy is there. You can only get that by going on the top bunk. 
and that is a perk. You can also have your own privacy, which is a perk. Think about if you're on the bottom bunk, you can't whack the old Jimmy under the sheets because you never know Tom, up the, the bottom top bunk even, just poke his head around, see what you're doing and laugh at you for years to come. It's much better to be the Tom in this situation than it is to be a Phil. Now, if you're really, if you're really concerned about falling, bunk beds come with mandatory rails. Just put those on. It's, it's no big deal. And even if you don't, because you don't have to, you can always fall on somebody. And falling on people is funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice ending argument. Now, it's up to you, the listener, if you want to be a part of this. If you want to, I guess, vote. Like, are we going to do that again? Are we going to have people vote? Oh, there's yes. No, there's no repercussions. It's just... Owen and I, you know, we have these little these little things, these pre-planned arguments. Uh, I highly suggest them to anybody in a budding friendship. Although, if you have the opportunity to get a whole bunch of strangers to vote on who presented the better argument, <laughs> that just takes your friendship that much further. So, head on over to Owen's fan page, PC Gamer 999 or if you're listening to this on YouTube, just pop it in the comments or see if there's already a comment that you can vote up it's very simple to do and thank you for your vote for Phil <laughs> for Owen alright well I feel like we have highlighted our sense of entitlement no 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 our sense of how we feel better than the other person we're friends right but mm. I'm sure we have ele- well, alright we should be friends, but I feel like we have elevated opinions of ourselves. I think it's a very common thing. I would like to um, share a little bit of news and get your opinion on it. Is that okay, Oh, <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Ask Americans how they stand compared to their fellow countrymen, and in survey after survey, the vast majority rank themselves above average in such areas as driving skill, sexual prowess, and general honesty. A recent study of English prisoners, published in the British Journal of Social Psychology, revealed that those miscreants think that they, too, are in the upper half. They rate themselves above average, whether compared to Britons in prison or in society at large, in compassion, generosity, <laughs> dependability, trustworthiness, and honesty. In fact, the only trait on the University of Southampton survey on which the criminals failed to rank themselves as better than the typical Brit was law abidingness, which I didn't even <laughs> realize was any sort of term that would be on a survey. And they're in prison. Yes, on that trait, the inmates rated themselves merely as average. So, Owen, let me ask you. Okay. Do you think you're above average? I'm going to list some, some qualities here. And I want you to tell me if you think you are below average, average, or above average. I'm ready. Compassion. Compassion. <laughs> what were the choices again? <laughs> Below average as compared to everyone else in London. Or average. London is where Owen lives. No. Or above average. Uh, below. Okay. Good. You got that right. <laughs> Generosity. Above. Definitely above. I... I right, give right, so no, much. <laughs> I give so much, it affects my compassion. All right. No, I agree with you there. Uh, Dependability. Oh, ab above average. Incorrect. <laughs> what do you mean, incorrect? <laughs> what? I know you. If this was one of our friendship questions. Ooh, okay. No, Just what do you mean, incorrect? You could depend on me. Have I showed up on every time uh, that we schedule to do something? Okay, yes. okay, all right. Fair enough, fair Good. enough. I will say you're Woo! average. How about preparedness, then? Average. And don't you <laughs> dare slander me by saying all right. no. Sorry. And finally, law-abidingness. Oh, below. Below. You a scoff law, sir? Oh, I'm a rapscallion. Care to share any uh, rapscallious stories? Things that might not get you in trouble? 
Should you reveal that you were the perpetrator? No, should, not really. Yeah, well, all right. We'll save that for another another time. We will check on Owen's lol abidingness later on in the season. Oh. Speaking of later on in the season, there was something that I did at the end of season two, something that I mentioned, a story that I did not finish. So if you want to email in and tell me what that was, you can get a chance to be, well, you don't get a chance. You get a raffle ticket and you'll have a chance to win all those prizes. And then maybe next time I will reveal the rest of that story. We did get uh, a few emails that... Oh, so I'm sorry. Before... Just wanted to mention that Master Debater, sponsored by Phil from Unlimited Ammo Comic, has now scored himself a ticket to possibly win back the prize. <laughs> but tons of other stuff, too. So there you go. So we, we got some emails. Um, not many, but I did just want to give a, a quick shout out. And they will, in fact, be put in to the raffle. Because that's Indeed. that's how nice I am. So Above average. We may not read them, but I did want to say thank you to Raphael, um, Drake, and Monique for for sending in some email. Uh, that is very nice of you. Obviously, the email you sent in is a bit outdated now, so I won't bore the people with some outdated <laughs> uh, references or whatnot. But uh, thank you so much. And you are in the the prize pool. So congratulations. Yes, if I could interject real fast, Monique, been around since I believe day one. Same with uh, Triple D, Raph. Um, not too sure about Drake, sorry. Just wanted to throw those thank yous in there, though. And I should also say that um, each email you send in um, for a new podcast will be entered into the raffle as well. So um, only one now. So don't try and game the system for these fantastic prizes. All right. Though, if you truly have multiple things to mail about, feel free. If something pops in your head or you have a little news or maybe you have a personal problem that Owen and I are obviously very skilled in taking care of for you. Absolutely. I am known to be the most fantastic problems over in all of Britain I am not <laughs> alright one thing I am is hungry and not my friend because you don't know me <laughs> <laughs> alright so I am hey, going to laugh it off Phil I am the laughing it off because still inside we're going to wait. We're going to see. People are going to be on my side. They're going to no, be like, oh, Phil said, Phil's gut reaction was mirror's edge. Double raffle tickets for voting for me. <laughs> you can't do that. I will rig the damn contest if you vote for me. All right. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> out of the I, way. Out of the way. I said out of the way. <laughs> you said delay. <laughs> Goddamn Londoners. All right. The next segment. Mouthville. Oh shit, I left the food in the kitchen. I have gone through a love-hate relationship with Mouthville, as had as has Owen. Uh I hated By it. By you he ruining it. it, yeah. Yeah. He loved it at the beginning, which was just me munching on some food. That's all he wanted. He didn't even want me to talk. He just wanted me to eat some food in the microphone, which I admit is absurd, but I felt like it just needed a little bit more. So then I started talking over it, and then we were kind of in middle ground as far as liking it. And then I wanted to do little speeches and things, and just Owen thinks I butchered it. So what I'm doing, season three, is not changing any of that. I'm going to eat some food from the local Korean market and read you some short, well, just one, but over the course of the season. I'm going to read some inspirational uh, stories, some fables or whatever, to help you out. And I'm going to enjoy some food while doing it. So, This is why we'll be friends, you know, because friendship's all about give and take, but you'll take, 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 and ruin a perfectly good feature. I am going to get 
the food yeah, I left Just, just the ignore kitchen. me. I'm still here, you know. <laughs> I thought I had it here. Just entertain the people. Entertain the people, he says. So I'll entertain them, all right? <laughs> so, were you entertaining the people, or did you, uh, farfig Nugan? Oh, no, I entertain them, all right. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. What I have here, well, what I have emptied into this bowl is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the only English on this package, which has like a little family on a, a rice paddy or something. This is Joan, Joan Korean style popcorn. <laughs> uh, basically just corn and sugar. And I am going to read for you, what is this story called? This is called The Carrot, The Egg, and The Coffee Bean. And when it ends, Owen, I'm going to have a question for you. So pay attention, yes? Absolutely. <clears throat> a young woman went to her mother and told her about her life. Ugh. It's like eating sugar. Ugh. Or how things were so hard for her. She didn't know how she was going to make it. And she wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and was struggling. It seemed that as one problem was solved, a new one arose. Her mother took her to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Soon, the pots came to a boil. In the first, she placed the carrots. In the second, the eggs. And in the last, she placed ground coffee beans. She let them sit and boil without saying a word. In about 20 minutes, she turned off the burners. She fished the carrots out and placed them in a bowl. She pulled the eggs out, and then she ladled the coffee out and placed that in a cup. Turning to her daughter, she asked, Tell me, what do you see? Carrots, eggs, and coffee, the young woman replied. And the mother brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did, and noticed that they were soft. She then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, she asked her to sip the coffee. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to choke and die. The daughter smiled as she tasted its rich aroma. The daughter then asked, What does it mean, mother? Her mother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity. Boiling water. The egg had been fragile. The thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The carrots wanted strong and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The ground coffee beans were unique. After they were in the boiling water, they changed the water. So, Owen, I ask you, what are you? Are you like an egg? I thought you were going to say that all those things had in common, that they were stuffed up a fanny. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an egg? When you're presented with adversity, do you harden up inside like an egg? Do you go soft <laughs> like a carrot? Or do you change your form like coffee and become something better? I change my form like coffee. Are you making fun of me? Because <laughs> I can't no. respond. There's friggin' Korean popcorn all over the place. We're friends. I want to do such a thing. Hmm. Well, whew, my jaw is tired, and I would like to know, and I'm sure Owen would, what uh, what you think you are. Are you coffee? Are you an egg? Are you soppy carrots? Mm. 
If you are going to email in for any of what we have discussed on today's show, please try and keep it all in one email. Uh, if you forget something, then please do email in again. But uh, try to keep it all in one if you can. I would appreciate that very much. You can email us at wave, no, contact at wave of absurdity.com. <laughs> We're never going to get that right. Oh. Well, Phil, season three, has it, have we started off on a high note? Has it been a success in your books? <coughs> if I know Phil and I don't, I think that's a yes. <laughs> a little rusty, but otherwise I think we're doing okay. <laughs> I'm doing better than you. All right, everyone, I'll see you in a week from now for a new episode or a backup episode uh, until then thanks for listening see you later bye quick roll play we are a pair of of jeans uh, in a woman's clothing store and oh no a horribly obese woman is about to wear a pair of jeans but watch this with three sizes too small oh no wait how are we how are we both being a pair of pants you're the left side i'm the right <laughs> side okay all right and the stitches is actually our love for each other, which bonds us together. The, the stitches are our child. Exactly. And scene. Oh, I love the smell of being around other denim pants such as ourselves. Do you ever get the feeling that if we just had a little bit more material, we would have been destined for something bigger? Possibly, but I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, with the exception of our neighbor, the zipper, you know, life's been pretty good, Speaking right? Speaking of that ass, so he, you would not believe what he was doing the other day. He was actually, whoa, what hey, the, whoa. whoa, we've been picked up, man. Can oh, you I love see? that feeling, Can that you breeze. Us up? No, whoop, spinning us around by no, the moon. Hello. I'm not used to this. You, Mm, uh, this seems wrong. This seems wrong. Who is it? I can't see. I'm still a bit nauseous from all the spinning. Yeah. All right. Nope. We're all right. We're in the fitting room. You know the drill. We're here. We'll probably put back in a little bit. Let's just yeah. wait it out. Nope. Nope. The hanger's coming off. I gotta say that your left side is looking quite faded. Yeah. Well, that's the way they do it. Ooh. What is that? A foot? A Jesus Christ. What is going on? You've bloated twice your size. God. God, man, what are you doing? Who the hell is shoving ham oh, in here? Damn, she's <laughs> taking me in the rock. Oh, sweet Jesus, I've gone eight times. Oh, no, 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 the stitches, the stitches. What Somebody save the stitches. Children? Jesus Christ, Phil, save our children. Oh, what no, are they're, all gone, they're, they're all gone, they're all gone. Don't just tear. <laughs> no, that zipper Don't finally just, got it. He's all right. The zipper just pinged off. He's abandoned ship, Phil. We can't leave without our children. What the fuck is that smell? <laughs> I win! I win the role play! <laughs> There's some coffee beans up there. <laughs> what? <laughs> it relates to when I thought that she said that she sticked those three atoms up her fanny. Mm, yeah, and we've come right. full circle. A thank you and goodbye. Seriously, though, I've inhaled a Korean popcorn. <clears throat> I hope you die. <laughs> I'm, I'll put that on the next questionnaire. What did I almost choke on? Season 3, episode 1. Answer, I don't care. I thought you were going to die. It was funny. You're no friend of mine. You don't even know me. Whatever. Why don't you go play some Grand Theft Auto or something? That's your favorite game. <laughs> <laughs>